During this conference, we have been enriched by many words, ideas, and insights about Teilhard's life and work. Now it's time to listen to him speak his own words. Whenever Teilhard found himself without the means to celebrate Eucharist in its traditional form, yet with a deep desire to offer himself and the world to God, he would perform a ritual that he called the Mass on the World. Teilhard's Mass is dramatic. It is cosmic. Earth itself becomes his host, and the blood of suffering humanity his wine. As he prays, he envisions the universe as a whole slowly but surely being transformed into the body of Christ Omega. Teilhard began writing the Mass on the World in the Ain Forest during World War I while he served as a stretcher bearer. He continued to refine it in the Ordos Desert in China, while on a fossil finding expedition. Throughout his life, he lived in the spirit of his mass. Today, we come together to do what Teilhard did in the trenches and in the desert to reenact here an adaptation of his sacred ritual. It is timely that we celebrate this ritual. As we witness today so much devastation in our world, Teilhard's words speak to us anew. And so, as we begin, we place ourselves in our own deserts, in our own places of inner and outer warfare. In all those areas recently ravaged by natural disasters, in the areas of our world that are suffering because of human misuse, in those parts of our world where people are suffering. We ask for a blessing for each of them. We ask that our consciousness may be transformed that we, so that we are ready to take on the great work that is ours. Let us take a moment to experience the presence of the divine attractor who allures us into a future full of hope. And so, in Teilhard's words, we pray. Over there, on the horizon, the sun has just touched with light the outermost fringe of the eastern sky. Once again, beneath this moving sheet of fire, the living surface of Earth wakes and trembles and begins its fearful travail. Once again, O oh God, we make the whole earth our altar, and on it we offer you the labors and sufferings of the world. One by one, we see and love all those whom you have given us to sustain and charm our lives. One by one also, we number those who make up that beloved extended family which gradually surrounded us, its unity fashioned out of the most disparate elements, with affinities of the heart, of scientific research, and of thought. And again, one by one, we call before us the whole vast anonymous ocean of living humanity those who surround us and support us, though we do not know them. Above all, 
those who in office, laboratory, and factory truly believe in the progress of earthly reality and who today will take up again their impassioned pursuit of the light. It is to this deep ocean of humanity that we desire all the fibers of our being to respond. We offer you today, O oh divine creator, this bread, our toil, the harvest to be won by our labor. Into our chalice we pour this wine, our pain, the sap that is to be pressed out of this day from earth's fruits. All the things in the world to which the coming day will bring increase, and all those that will wither and die, all of them, we gather into our arms and hold them out to you in offering. The offering you mysteriously needed, need every day to appease your hunger, to slake your thirst, is nothing less than the growth of the world born ever onwards in the stream of universal becoming. In the very depths of our hearts, you have implanted a desire, irresistible, hallowing, which makes us cry out, believer and unbeliever alike, Lord, make us one. This is the material of our sacrifice, the only material we desire. We place on our patent all that, that will increase beauty, and all that will wither and die. have received from you an overwhelming sympathy for all that stirs in the heart of matter. Because we know ourselves less as children of heaven than as children of this earth, we will this morning climb up in spirit to the high places and upon all that is about to be born and all that is about to die we will call down your fire. O 
we cling so tenaciously to the illusion that fire comes forth from the depths of earth. Rather, it is you who are the inmost depths in which our cosmos emerges gradually into being and grows gradually to its final completeness. As it loses those boundaries which to our eyes seem so immense. Fire, the source of being, light, the source of all growth, did not emerge gradually out of the womb of darkness. No, in the beginning was power, intelligent, loving, energizing. In the beginning was the word, supremely capable of mastering and molding whatever might come into being in the world of matter. In the beginning, there were not coldness and darkness. There was fire. Blazing spirit, raging fire, be pleased yet once again to come down and breathe a soul into the newly formed, fragile film of matter, which with this day the world is to be freshly clothed. Radiant word, blazing power, you who mold the multiple so as to breathe your life into it. I pray you, lay on us your hands, powerful, considerate, omnipresent, those hands which plunge into the depths and the totality, present and past of things, so as to reach us simultaneously through all that is most immense, and most inward within us and around us. May the might of those invincible hands direct and transfigure that earthly travail which we have gathered into our hearts and now offer you in its entirety. Remove it, rectify it, recast it down to the depths from whence it springs. Over every living thing which is to spring up, to grow, to flower, to ripen during this day, say again the words, this is my body. And over every death force which waits in readiness to corrode, to wither, to cut down, speak again your commanding words, which express the supreme mystery of faith. This is my blood. It is done. Once again, fire has penetrated earth. without earthquake or thunderclap. The flame has lit up the whole world from within. All things individually and collectively are penetrated and flooded by it. From the inmost core of the tiniest atom to the mighty sweep of the most universal laws of being. So naturally has it flooded every element every energy, every connecting link in the unity of our cosmos, that one might suppose the cosmos to have burst spontaneously into flame. No visible tremor marks this inexpressible transformation. And yet, at the touch of your word, the immense host, which is the universe, is made flesh. Through your incarnation, my God, all matter is henceforth incarnate. Through our human experience, we have gradually become aware of the properties that make the universe so like our human flesh. Like the flesh, the universe attracts us by a charm that lies hidden in mystery. 
Like the flesh, it disintegrates and eludes us when submitted to analysis. And like the flesh, it can be embraced only by reaching out endlessly to attain that which lies beyond the confines of the world that has been given to us. The universe, so like our human flesh, can be embraced only by reaching out endlessly to that which lies beyond in remoteness and nearness. Reaching, yearning, desiring, standing in a presence, nameless and impalpable. consecration of the world, the luminosity and fragrance that suffuse the universe, take on for me the form of a body and a face in you. I thank you, my God, for having in a thousand different ways led my eyes to discover the immense simplicity of things. For those who firmly believe that everything around us is the body and blood of the Word, a marvelous diaphony causes the luminous warmth of a single life to shine forth from the depths of every event, every element. 
If the fire has come down into the heart of the world, it is to lay hold on us and to absorb us. From now on, we cannot be content simply to contemplate it. What we must do when we have taken part with all our energies in the consecration that causes its flames to leap forth is to consent to the communion. So, Divine Spirit, we prostrate ourselves before your presence in the universe which has now become living flame. Beneath all that we shall encounter this day, all that happens to us, all that we achieve, it is you we desire, you we await. What we want is that you turn our human experiences of fear and terror into overflowing joy at being transformed into you. We stretch out our hands unhesitatingly toward the fiery bread which you set before us. Within this bread, you have planted the seed of all that is to develop in the future. To take it is, we know, to surrender ourselves to port forces which will tear us away painfully from ourselves in order to drive us into danger, into laborious undertakings, into constant renewal of ideas, into an austere detachment where our affections are concerned. Finally, and above all, give us a blessed desire to go on discovering, fashioning, and experiencing the world so as to penetrate further into yourself, O oh God. O oh God, all joy and all achievement, the very purpose of our being and all of our love of life depend on this one basic vision of the union between yourself and the universe. In the whirlpool of conflicts and energies out of which must develop our powers to apprehend and experience your holy presence, we trust in your word that those who are filled with an impassioned love for you hidden in the forces which bring increase to the earth, those earth will lift up like a mother in the immensity of her arms and will enable them to contemplate the face of God. We stretch toward the fiery bread. To take it is to surrender ourselves. To danger. to laborious undertakings.
to a constant renewal of ideas. To an austere development. May this communion free us and enable us to contemplate the face of God. Continue to um, to spread the word throughout our world, and to live this great challenge that Teilhard presents to us. <laughs> 